I wanted to be the first artist to paint uh, life-size automobiles with automotive paint, but I didn't want to use lacquers and, you know, the solvent paints. And a friend of mine was making the mixing tanks for DuPont, PPG, and BASF, and I found out about it. I met with DuPont officials in Wilmington, drove back from Detroit. Uh, they weren't going to give me the paint, but then they saw the quality of the work and the scale I wanted to work in, and they saw something. So they gave me the paint. I'm the only person, according to them, uh, that has ever been given an experimental product. Well, I think you've outdone yourself with this piece of this Clydesdale, which is just absolutely amazing. How, how did that come into being? When did you think about, well, I think I might paint a, a Clydesdale? Oh, I thought about it way back in 1983. Mm. And I approached Budweiser, and they invited us to uh, come photograph one of their horses. But there was no way I could paint it life-size on aluminum with these paints, because we couldn't get an aluminum panel big enough. So this will work out real well. So a couple of years ago, I approached Kenneth J. Herman. These people are the ones who are building the Freedom Tower, the facade uh, for the new Freedom Tower in Lower Manhattan, and they constructed my pen. So that's two pieces welded together, metal finished, and now we have one panel so we could produce a, uh, a one-piece painting. And it's probably, I think it is the largest realist painting ever done of a horse. So my dream came true. Budweiser does not know about it. <laughs> <laughs> what were the big challenges? Obviously, scale is one. I, I'm used to working, you know, big, you know, huge scale, because I was a car designer, you know, I was a senior designer at a Cadillac, Pontiac, and Chevrolet styling. I'm used to working on like, cars, like the big one you have, the 24 right. car in the other gallery. The biggest concern was uh, probably moving it and making it get into that trailer, because I have limited access, you know, I have quarter inch on each side, but uh, that was the biggest. So before we actually built this panel, when you saw what it looked like on the back, this is all TIG welded. That had to be pretty well figured out. So the painting itself, yes, it was a challenge. It took five months, but I kind of knew where I was going with it. I can glaze this paint and layer it. I work very thin. It's like it took a tea bag and dipped it in water five times. That's the consistency of my paint. Right. So when I'm working with red, it almost looks pink when I spray it. After 15 uh, paint, cross brush, hatch, spray, because you have to spray this paint too, it's automotive. And um, then it builds up to the intensity. Well, once you start layering, you get a refractionary process that you cannot get with oils of traditional mediums. So you get a surface, a depth of paint and a saturation of color and a surface finish that you're not gonna get with That's a normal paint. It's a little different, a little out of the ordinary. There's photorealism and all the other isms that we connect with uh, narrative painting, but you've raised the, the limit. I mean, it's just you've broken through the ceiling to use the cliche. Well, I appreciate you saying that. That was the idea. I don't consider myself a photorealist painting because I work a very un unorthodox process and a very unorthodox multi-layering technique, and I, I really don't work directly from photographs. Right. You know, when I had this, this horse, I had maybe had 10 photos from different angles, and I redrew it, turned the head. I'm used to doing that from my cars. You know, I, I cheat those like you won't believe. You know, they look right when they're done, they're cheated. That was something we did in the profession. And I do that with my big human paintings, my animal paintings, and this. So in that realm, I don't fall into the, in my opinion, I don't fall into the photorealist realm. Well, you, you are truly a special talent, and uh, well, appreciate we're, that. we're honored to, uh, to have this major work. Well, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the special effort to, to make this happen for us. And, uh, we'll Thanks, never, Lou. We'll never forget it. Friends since 1983 and friends for life, buddy. <laughs>